This oh, YouTuber oh. just flexed his phone to the poorest country in the world. Online from the phone, they can access all the clever minds. There you go. His name is Phidias, like as in Phidias and Ferb. He is used to be part of a channel called Airac, which currently is also a big thing. But today I'm focusing on Phidias, the main character who's not actually the main character. He's more of a spin-off, like Joey from Friends after he left Friends. It's a weird thing that's been happening. And for the last year or so, Phidias has been growing his YouTube channel. Thing is, I didn't know who he was, but I definitely knew his face. Because when you see him, un unable to mistake his face. Even blind people know this is Phidias' face. He looks like a grandpa with a child's body. It's very hard to miss. And for the last year or so, this guy has been making devious videos. I don't know if he knows how bad they are, but he has come into attention recently and for the last few months for making stuff that's illegal, like going to Japan, breaking laws, doing a video in which he travels for free and then proceeds to get caught on camera and films himself doing illegal activity, which is like mind-blowingly stupid. And also, like this is my personal favorite, which is why I did the video. He went to the poorest country in the world and his thumbnail, which he changed by the way, is him like happy with these poor kids. And he stays at a hotel and does this weird shit that you just wouldn't think a human being would do. So I'm gonna do a little dive on him and try and see if uh, this guy is real or if he's one of the aliens that have come to our country to like infiltrate it. I'm not really sure, but this is, this is Phidias. So let's, let's start with where Phidias began. He is from an island. He was born in an island, which I thought was called crypto. I thought this was some sort of joke. Like, oh, cryptocurrency had a baby and this guy came out of it. But no, no, it's, it's an island that's like close to Greece, but it is a country. It's Cyprus. And, uh, you know, for any of you who have been following my channel, that's the holiday destination the guys went to in Love is Blind Sweden. So, ooh. Oh, shit! A ghost! But he came from that island, he flew and I think swam and ran 11,000 miles to meet this other creator called Arak, who was growing in popularity at the time. Arak's channel skyrocketed in views because, largely in part, due to this guy, Phidias, who would do the stupidest stuff, the most outlandish stuff, and oftentimes the illegal things that Arak wouldn't. And he had no problem doing it. So Phidias grew Arak's channel, and then I think what happened is that he left because he realized I'm gonna be the main character now. Because there's no mention of it in Arak's videos. Just one day he's not there and he's never there again. There are still things in Phidias's video that like allude to Arak's channel, like in one video where he goes to Harvard, he at some point wears the Mafia t-shirt, which I think is Arak's fan base name. Yep, they're called the Mafia. The Mafia isn't a fucking aesthetic. I don't know how the actual Mafia feels about that, but okay. You know what? The actual Mafia doesn't watch YouTube, does it? Can you imagine like Tony Soprano watching YouTube? Can you imagine like Tony Soprano watching YouTube? the fuck is this shit? I don't know about that. The point is, these two have split. And then since splitting, Phidias started his own YouTube channel in which he tried to be Mr. Beast. The only problem is there was no way that would happen. You have to really actually understand things. You can't be an alien to do this. And I think he just didn't understand that. So he started doing things like, I'm really not gonna eat for 30 days. And his mom got sad and said, come home. Uh, he also then started taking Ryan Trahan's good series about turning a penny into something. And instead of doing that, said, I'm just gonna do everything for free and started doing illegal activities. So what you have here is basically <laughs> like a Frankenstein like a baby of Arak, Mr. Beast and Ryan Trahan where he takes all of the the best qualities and throws them in the trash can and then does his own thing. So this is what we're looking at today. And let me start you off with the, this video which is just 
from traveling more than 11,000 kilometers to see his idol, to even getting emotional when Eric finally decides to meet him face to face. Phidias is one of the few YouTubers who proved that he was worthy of becoming Eric's team member. I don't know if he's going to finish this challenge. He told me that he's ready to die, but I can't stand losing him because of his crazy ideas. Can you imagine two things here? Like, imagine telling your mom, I'm ready to do this challenge and die for doing it. And the challenge is like, I'm not eating McDonald's for 10 days or some, whatever Phidias challenge is. What the hell are you doing telling your mom you're ready to die for a challenge? She had you and you're like, well, this challenge is more important than you, mom. Secondly, who the fuck phones their mom? Like close up, like, ah, tell me how you feel about me saying that I want to die for this challenge. Uh, action mom what kind of bullshit this is like grand theft auto 4 if roman's life was the main thing man this is crazy that's basically the intro now let me take you to three videos that i found that just illustrate perfectly why i think this man is an alien so we need to start contacting jupiter and see if he can go back or whatever. Phidias flexes on poor people. So he did a video where he spent a hundred hours in the poorest country in the world, which doesn't sound like a challenge. That sounds like survival, firstly, for the people who live there. Secondly, going there like a jackass and then like sh exposing the fact that it is actually poor is just, whew, this is, this is some journalism. This is the world's poorest country and there is a lot of bad things said about it. <laughs> He did it like a Mr. B. I'm going to the world's poorest country. I'm going to see how poor I can be. I like really started pr pretty hard there, huh? He, that's really good. That's really good. Treating a subject, you know, that requires a lot of sensitivity with the, the grace of a fucking WWE wrestler. Thank you, man. That's why I'm going to spend the next 100 hours here to see with my own eyes if it's true or not. What the actual fuck do you mean if it's true or not? That's a factual statement that it's poor. It's not an opinion. If the GDP of a country is low, that's not like a, oh, you know, subjectively, I think you guys are poor. But you are New York City and not a country, but you're pretty rich. But I think you're poor. You can't say that. You have to, you, this is actually a thing. You, you're, this is not like a, oh, I'm going to see with my own eyes are they really poor or are they rich and making us seem like dumbasses? I did the journalistic work. It turns out they're so poor they didn't even have a runway. I had to fucking parachute off the plane. I know. When we arrived in the airport, we saw something that we didn't expect. The policeman was asking us to give him money for no reason. So I was wondering... Yeah, yeah, bribes. Look, uh, maybe I have a dog in this fight. Maybe I didn't allude to the fact that I am from Africa. And it actually is a little bit annoying when people do this anywhere in Africa. But like, yeah, okay, I'm not from that country. Uh, but bribes in Africa is like just normal. I think anyone will tell you that. That's not the poor thing. That's just a corruption thing. If the rumors are true, and after three hours, we made it out of there. In the United States, it cost around $50 to get a haircut. What the fuck? Haircut? $50? Can someone verify that in the comments? Who goes for 50 Not goals. If you guys, I know, they like snip like one part of your hair and charge you way too much money. I don't get it either. I think you guys should go to Barbara's, honestly. But no, seriously. Uh, What? Bitch ass barb. This is because of the Instagram stuff where the barbers do all sorts of crazy shit. They set your hair on fire, then put it out with marshmallows. Like they do some crazy shit on our TikTok reel and then charge you 50 bucks. I just want someone with a buzz blade to just cut my hair. I don't. $50? Get out. Fidia's hair looks like it's been cut by his mom. Let's see how much it costs here. <laughs> Are you ready? No. <laughs> So the first thing they do is they go and get a haircut because this is an exciting video. We need something really exciting. A haircut costs $50 in America. Now let's see it in shitty country. Let's go, cousin. This is Russian now. Let's see how much it costs here. <clears throat> so his friend also, by the way, I just want to note that Phidias, I don't know how old he is. He looks like he's at least 2,000 years old. But the kid looks like a kid and I don't know what kind of friendships 
he has with like kids here, but a lot of the people on his channel that he does videos with seem oddly young compared to him. And I don't know if it's just me that's a bit uncomfortable, but I don't know if I'd have like, you know, necessarily all my friends be in middle school. The only people that are outside to see Nassim haircut. How much is normally a haircut? One thousand. One dollar is two thousand. You got fifty cents haircut. Okay, so then he starts being a jackass in front of everyone with the camera. Like these do this is what people do for a living. And he's like, you've got haircut 50 cent, 50 cent, bro. <laughs> How crazy is it? Get two haircut. Yeah, 50 second in my whole life. Find me something I can afford. I seem you look sexier now. And he's a fucking child, bro. He's fucking, you can't call kids sexy. Do you want to be R. Kelly in this? Do you, what do you want? What do you, do you want to be Carl Malone? What's happening here? Why, why do you do this, Phidias? Don't tell kids that they look sexier now. That's not a that's not a phrase you should say to a kid. You agree, guys, right? Here's your fifty cents. Oh, what an asshole! What an actual! <laughs> He's literally giving the guy money. Here's your fifty cent, bro. Take it. Keep the change. I don't need it. I'm a rich youth. <laughs> The ax the accent. <laughs> we left the barber shop, I saw something that I wasn't expecting. This is a house of a person here. Look at this. People actually live here. Oh my god. Then for some odd reason, this is like evil National Geographic, I'm just realizing. This is like if Sir David Attenborough became evil and he's like, look at that! A shitty house. Let's go in. Like, uh, why? Why? He finds like a house that people live in because they're under poor conditions. And again, where I come from, this is a major problem. There is a lot of it. I don't think anybody has ever said, come on, guys, let's see how they live. And then started pointing out how bad it is. Obviously, it's a very, very tough situation. The economy has never been good in certain places, and it is hard to get by. It's not like a a tough thing to maintain. If he was actually helping these people or saying, this is how this person lives, let's try and fix that, I'd be I'd be behind this already. But he's a look at this house, how do people live here? Look at my 50 cent haircut sexy friend. Look at this guy. Here the bicycles are actually the main transportation of people. Only the rich can afford a car. After a long day, we finally arrived to the hotel. It's chef's kiss content, honestly. Saying the words, most people can't afford to, uh, a car, then followed up by, we arrive at the hotel, is like the most like... That's why you went to the poorest country, to go to a hotel, because everything would be cheaper, right? Yes, that's the reason people go to Bali, it's a cheap holiday. People get tourism, and they give you the best experience for the lowest cost of money. Ooh, just... Exploit that system, won't you? Just wanted to say, guys, that poor doesn't mean bad. Poor is like being tall or short. It's just a fact. And there you go. So now Phidias turns into a ph philosopher Phidias. And he said, <laughs> in the middle of the video, by the way, while the kid is looking behind him like he's been kidnapped. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. He says, and I quote, being poor is like being short. It's just a fact. Which is like, honestly, like, I think it's so dumb, it starts to get funny. Like, he became a comedian by trying to be intelligent, which is, ironically, just pure gold right there. Imagine trying to sound intelligent and people start laughing at you because they think you're genuinely now one of the funniest human beings on earth. Being poor is a fact. Being poor is like being short. You, okay. So what happens if I get more money? Do, by that logic, do I get taller as well just in life? I don't... Why even... Okay, Phidias. He says he reads. I don't believe him. I don't believe... I don't know. I don't know about that one. Doesn't define... You. Yeah, being poor is just a fact. It doesn't define you. It's a fact. Whether you get rich or not, you are poor. That's a fact. I, I've, I've been broke most of my life. I'm poor. It's just a fact. I don't care how rich I will be. I'm poor. It's a fact. Thanks, Phidias. See the poorest people in the poorest country. So we went to the orphanage. Phidias really wants to go to the orphanage, but they're not letting him. I know he really wants to see how things are here. Okay, so then the kid who has AirPods in his ears in the poorest country in the world is talking about how he wants to go to an orphanage, but they won't let him in. Let me in. Let me in. Probably because they don't want him filming kids for exploitation, you know, like so many people do. 
I'm thinking, I'm trying not to punch my MacBook screen because it didn't do anything. Sorry, MacBook screen, I would never hurt you. Yeah, they were shouting, Mutsunga, Mutsunga, white person came. After a lot of time, our guide convinced them to let us in, but they didn't allow us to feel, except this little kid that has malaria. Oh, hi, thanks for checking in. I'm still a piece of garbage. Ah, uh, so he filmed that, because then they allowed him for some reason to film a poor a child who's suffering and he's like, yes, let me take that opportunity. And now he's in the video. So the Phidias, Phidias and Ferb, this is the evil Disney channel. You're watching evil Disney. Yes, but you gotta see what Phidias and Ferb are doing. Those boys are evil. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. There's a lot of shit going on there. We had very limited time here, so I wanted to see how their education system is. So at this point, Phidias becomes a teacher. I think it's been a day, he's staying at the hotel, he's harassed most of the people there. Now he's like, okay, let me take on the school education system. Fuck school! Fuck all this bullshit! What the fuck? The fuck? And this is where the start of the video comes from and everything else, where it's just like, it's almost like watching something that's surreal. He goes into the class and tells them that he learned everything from a phone. And, and it's like, he goes to a class where they cannot afford internet, phones, probably even food or drink is hard to come by. And he says this shit to them. Can you imagine that? Going to like, if you went to school and someone who was way more successful came and said, you'll never be able to make it like this, and then left. That's so disheartening. And they came and surrounded us like we were the coolest thing in the world. Hey, I love you. So this is like a big event happening to the school. The E goes through the roof. It's 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 off the camera. I am a hundred years old. <laughs> he's not joking. Stop laughing. He is at least a hundred. I think he's lying about his age. I don't think he's a hundred. I think he's two hundred and sixty-four. I've seen his face. That shit has more craters than the moon. Please, he's old. How old are you? That's not possible. That's not, I don't think that humans can, unless he's Benjamin Button, can someone please do a DNA, a DNA test on his face? Please, thank you. Amen. Thank you. The most things that I learned, they are not only from school. They are online, from the phone. They can access all the clever minds. I said this because only 10% of the population has access to the internet. It's just, I mean, it's still, it's insulting to be like, uh, to go to a school and be like, I didn't learn much from school. Mostly I learned from this phone shit right here. I, I, you know, I do everything on my phone. I text people, I learn, I watch the pornos. I do everything on this phone. You guys have to, you know, do some crazy stuff. But I use my phone. So get one, guys. Get rich, get one. Or die trying, I don't know. $200 would probably change this man's life. And the end of the video, there's nothing else happens besides the end of the video when he gives the man a wheelchair, which I would say is nice. But at the end of the video, he gives it to him and the guy says thanks. And then he forcibly hugs him, which I find just, just mint. This man's life and we can change. This dude doesn't even look like he wants to hug. He's like, I got no energy and I still want to get away from you. This poor man, like, bro, I... I'm trying to be like, yeah, he did a nice thing for him, but at the same time, he's like, hug me or else. Together, these kids deserve equal opportunities like the kids in privileged countries. <laughs> oh, hit that. Privileged countries. <laughs> oh, shit. To raise awareness and make some small change because I believe small change can make a big difference. I invite you to click now the top link in the description and donate to raise money for the people that need it the most. So he wants to make a small change and... Uh, he had a goal of raising $20,000 and he said he'd put a dollar in for every one someone else puts in. And I looked at the petition. It looks like he did it. Um, so I want to say congratulations. I don't know if he did it, but I, I, I'm going to just like, I'm not going to say that he didn't because I don't know. So maybe he did that. And like, that's admirable in any way. It's always good for YouTubers to give back. So I can't front on that. But like the whole video, come on. You look at the thumbnail. He's like... He's like a fucking Jesus, like looking at these kids and all of them like, oh, why would anyone do this thumbnail? It looks like an offensive thumbnail. Oh, 
the original thumbnail was him just standing, being happy, and kids were surrounding him. He changed it, and it's still pretty bad, I gotta say. He's very happy in this country. So next we'll look at another video he tackles on education in a different way. This is on his second channel, Phidias2, spelt T-O-O. I don't know either, but he goes to Harvard in that. Harvard is the toughest university in the world. He's looking more like fucking Perry the Platypus. This is a platypus. I mean, he's, he's getting, he's doing it. He's turning into Disney. And for the next three days, I'm going to do exactly what students do. Attend classes, go on dates, party, and much more. As we all know, Harvard is famous for partying. Okay, let's go. You know, that's what Harvard's there for. <sighs> I looked at this video and I was like, oh my God, he's actually gonna get enrolled in Harvard. Maybe that would be kind of like, can I make it to Harvard as a YouTuber? Nope, he just went on campus and like disrupted everyone's days for like three days straight. Police got called on him, which is a reoccurring theme in his life and videos. And he makes one of the most boring slash worst videos I've seen. So I'm gonna <laughs> make you look at it too. But the real reason I'm here is to answer one question. Is university education really worth it? Are you gonna figure that question out by partying, going on dates and attending class? Are you gonna figure that shit out, huh? You're gonna just, okay. You know college is older than you, I think. I mean, he might be 4,000 years old, but I think college supersedes that. It's been around, bro. First step is to make a friend. Going to climate class right now. Okay, so step one, he makes a friend and he finds another kid. This time, hopefully he won't call him sexy. FBI, open up! And the kid goes to class and he sneaks into class. So you think, okay, Phidias, maybe he's gonna say something good about like Harvard or bad or something interesting about how maybe Harvard is different or similar to like other colleges. Let's go Harvard students! Ish, buddy. Ish, buddy. Ish, buddy. I followed my new friend and we entered a classroom. We sat down and the teacher immediately started the science class. Oh, thank God he immediately. Imagine if he just st fucking stood there for like 10, 20 minutes. Phidias says some shit that like, I, this is why I think he's not a human being. Cause like, you know, I think most people would be like, at least the teacher started talking. He's like, he started immediately. Normally I stand and I gather energy from the solar planets before I start talking for 20 minutes. To be honest, I really tried to understand what he was saying, but I couldn't. And from what I understood, I was not the only one. Other students seemed bored and they were playing games on their phones. They told Yes, yes, exactly. All the enrolled students who are there because they had to get accepted by high scores or something to actually get accepted into Harvard are feeling bored, which, you know what, fuck it, they're entitled to. You going there being like, what is James Hub? Who is that? I know a different type of hub, but not James Hub. <laughs> I mean, come on, bro. He's learning astrology his first day of Harvard. Give him a break. He told me that I should check out the famous Harry Potter cafeteria. Wow, look at these guys. It's so beautiful. Yeah, the, apparently, so Harvard's got this beautiful, like, uh, communal sort of, like, eatery place. I don't, I don't know what you even call it. It just looks really cool. I had a friend who went to Harvard. I forgot. I completely forgot. I should have just asked him how it is. But yeah, I mean, now I got a friend and an alien who's going there. So I guess we get to see all the food. And this is this is what he says about the food. This is the food that students eat. I like it because there are a lot of options to choose from and overall it's healthy. He, he's like, it's like a third grade uh, homework report. Go with your older brother to Harvard. I like the food because there is a lot of choices and it is healthy. That's supposed to be good content on YouTube, apparently. I feel like I'm in a Harry Potter movie. Look at the ceiling. This is a place that they have lectures. I also like how he can't for two seconds be off camera to the point that he has to have the camera in his face and he's like, look at this guy, Harvard, Harvard. And half his big fucking face is taking up the screen. I actually did want to see Harvard instead of Phidias slash maybe a little bit of Harvard. It would be nice if I could see 
inside a little better, but his face is too busy. Like, look at this, guys. Look, look at it. It's Harve. Okay, good. So then he sleeps off campus for the day because, you know, he's got a hotel. Tomorrow is a big day because I'll try to find a beautiful girl to go on a date with. Yeah, because that's what Harvard is known for. A beautiful girl to go on a date with. That, we all know that's what people go to Harvard for. Conan O'Brien went there for to get a date. So, do you want to be my first victim? What? I'm looking for a blonde woman with green jeans to go on a date with her. I'm not blonde. Okay, that's a shutdown and a half. He missed. He he missed. He he fucking he took brown for blonde and he's at Harvard. What kind of Harvard student can't recognize colors? I'll tell you what kind of Harvard student. One that doesn't go there. Let's get to a hard date. <laughs> so he gets rejected by everyone for hours until he thinks of an ingenious idea. I'm going to go on Tinder and boost myself. And he even says it. He's like, I use all lots of money to boost myself to get a date. And finally ends up getting one. I was trying everything in my life to find a date, but it wasn't working out. Real life dating doesn't work. I'm going to try online dating. We never give up. What a really sad thing to say. I didn't think I was going to get that realism from a boy called Phidias with blue hair. Dating doesn't work in real world. Okay, guys? People don't like a man who wear Harvard uh, uh, hoodie and Adam Sandler shorts. People don't like it. <laughs> Okay, so another problem I have with what Phidias is doing sometimes is like, I understand like uh, public things, a public, but like those people were on dating apps. I don't know if they want their information out there. So like if you could blur it, that would be great. Because otherwise, you're doing people a disservice and putting their public information, uh, sorry, their private information into public videos. And that's, it's kind of like our responsibility to not do that if people don't want that. It's like one thing to go on campus or to go into stores or public places, but like dating apps is like, I don't know, that's a bit of a gray area for me. Money to boost all the dating apps and I'm just waiting. Oh my god, I spent the last five hours just messaging girls. <laughs> Parked outside the library now. Does that conflict with your reg regular life schedule <laughs> in any way? I spent the last five hours. The only difference is I did it in Harvard, not next to it. And she came to pick me up. In her bumble photos, she looks very good. Let's see how she looks. Okay, so uh, she got matched with a girl, Lacey, and uh, she looks very good to him. And then she meets him outside in a car. The only problem is that Lacey didn't know this dude was filming. And you can see it on her face, the sort of like shock... Uh, she goes along with it. What a good sport. But like, she's kind of like, oh, okay. See how she looks in real life. Hello. What a beautiful big car you have. Yeah, wow. My American truck. <laughs> nice Hi. to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. That's one of the hottest compliments I've ever heard in my life. You, can, you meet a girl, you're like, what a beautiful big car. America. Fuck yeah. Right? Okay. Major. You are my first online date. First one. What about you? A few. <laughs> the first 20. This poor lady, she dressed up so nicely, wearing a suit jacket. And she really got herself like, she, I don't know why she swiped right on this dude. He, I don't get it. And I know for a fact she didn't think he had blue hair because there's no way he has pictures of that shit. There's no way. So she, uh, her shock when he comes out, hello, and then fucking blue hair and camera. And... Poor girl. To me, it was a bit awkward, to be honest. The morning of day three. Yeah, he even says it's really awkward. And uh, I guess that was part of his somehow going to Harvard. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know how this has anything to do with Harvard. It would take a fucking Harvard graduate to dissect this video, honestly. Maybe this is some kind of pseudo-science that is happening here that I'm just not aware of. But day three, he tries to have a party because you know Harvard is known for partying down, man. I'm bugging the university with only one goal, to create the best party ever happening. For some reason, some students reported me. Yeah, so <laughs> instantly we cut to him getting a run-in with the cops. Someone, people start calling the cops on him, obviously, because they're not trying to party down in Harvard. And the cops are like, yo, you're a harassing woman. Can you please stop? 
And immediately they let him go because they were like really nice cops for some reason. And as soon as they let him go, he's like, they were so nice. And then goes back to doing the same shit. Some reason, some students reported me. I was just eating food in the dining hall. And then you were harassing females too. You gotta tell them the whole story. They were both really nice and they let me go. Now it became night and the party starts soon. This guy never fucking learns. That's the problem. Like, for some reason, he just constantly runs into these policemen who seem to be very, very nice. And I don't know what the reason is, but he just has that luck with them and he never learns the lesson. I'm not saying that, you know, anything bad should happen, but like, how is he going to learn if every time they're like, hey, you've been warned. How many times are you going to warn this dude? Because as soon as they say that, he goes right back to doing the same thing. So he goes and he has some party, some people show up and he finally assesses whether college or not is good or bad because, you know, we all really want our educational values from a guy called Phidias who has the bluest hair known to man. For them guys, I'm reading the autobiography of Elon Musk and I just want to- No, you're not. You're, that's, there's a fucking menu in there. You're looking at food. There is no, I don't think that you can possibly do that. Sorry, man. I'm sorry. I don't think from looking at him that I can agree that he has been reading Elon Musk's biography. I don't even think he's that far into it. I don't know. I don't believe it. I just want to point out that I love learning. I'm not against learning, but I'm against forced learning. Oh. Best learning, it comes intrinsically. Oh. Do you want to learn? Oh. oh no. He's against forced learning. Oh, I don't... Forgive me, I didn't know that you had to go to Harvard. Well, fuck me. I've been missing out on Harvard for so long. I didn't know that I was forced to go to Harvard. Well, shit, bro. I was. I needed to learn from the inside. I, Because in the last video, you said that you learned everything from a phone. Is your heart a phone? Like, how are you doing the intrinsic learning there? I didn't... I'm going to tell people from Harvard that they... You gotta do it from there, buddy. That 350K, can't beat this, okay? You know what that is? Flesh. I have it. Early 11 and nobody's here. Yeah, well, uh, people did eventually come to the party, but there's nothing important at the end. I'm going to travel across Japan. Ah, yes, of course. This is the video that people have been talking about. And I know that it's been long done. Like his channel has um, since, deleted this video and stuff and the only way that I found it was uh, some other video where <laughs> but he goes to Japan with three other youtubers and they try and make it from point A to point B with spending no money the problem is of course that he not only starts committing crimes but filming them snitching on yourself huh mm. you should listen to rap snitches MF Doom you would probably like it Phidias for free against these three youtubers and they oh my god they all look like children why does he hang out with kids why why does he what that's weird right that's not just me i that's weird right that's weird gets ten thousand dollars start <laughs> don't know why oh all god. these youtubers are always running it's more difficult to do this because they're probably always committing crimes dude can you get off his channel you seem like a nice dude. Leave his channel. It's a woman. Good luck. Thank you. Let's see if he will ask. Yeah, he also, there's also a girl who's a person of color in a different country and she's left her own devices to fend for zero dollars to make it from point A to point B. I don't need to tell you how dangerous that is. And I know, hey, it's a challenge, bro. And, you know, Japan might be one of the safest countries in the world, but no country is perfect. I don't care. I really don't care how big of a YouTuber you are, we're not gonna be doing this to, to girls. We're not, we're just not gonna be doing, you know how ridiculously bad people have it, especially, you know, women, it's, it's not okay to leave them alone. It's not okay if they don't have money. That's not a good thing to do. I don't like that. But first challenge is him getting on a bus. He gets money from someone, but not enough money, but he takes the bus anyway, and when he leaves, he just tries to say no money. And the guy drives him to the police station, which is the most gangster shit I've seen a bus driver do in a long time. In Japan, people pay when they go out of the bus. Get off? Yes. 680, yeah. 680. 680. No, no, man. 80. No. Uh, 
Police. No, no. And he pointed to his wife. He's like, police. It's time for the police. It's time for you to get that police right now. Yeah. I don't know what she's saying. I think I got in trouble, guys. I couldn't believe it. He locked me in the bus and drove me to the police station just because I was 80 yen short. In the police station, they started interrogating me and they took my phone away so I couldn't film anything. Thank <laughs> Yeah, so that's the life of a YouTuber. The worst part is they took my phone away. <laughs> that's the worst thing for a YouTuber. That's like taking ever. It's, it's his livelihood. You, you Japanese people have taken this man's livelihood because he didn't pay you 80 yen. Who is at fault here? Is it the the blue haired dude that keeps breaking laws? Uh, a country known for its respect and values. Thank you. Oh my God, guys. I spent the last five hours with the police and after they got bored of me for five hours, they paid for my thing. All this story we're talking about. They're, the police are so not, what other country would you be like, the police are like, ah, just let him go. He seems like a poor lost soul. Just, just let him out on the streets. I know that wouldn't happen in South Africa. I'd be stuck there for years. Okay, about 20 cents. So the police already knows me, so I'm going to disguise myself. Oh my God, bro. You're, he's like a GTA character. You know, in GTA, like after, you, like it's a mission failed or something, then you just restart. That's him. As soon as he gets busted, he gets out of the police thing and he's like, all right, back to committing crimes, people. He just puts on a hoodie now and he's like, I'm ready to recommit these crimes. Now, me disguised, I'm ready to sneak in the train. This is my train, so let's hope that nobody gets me. And now it's time to teach you how to get the train for free. So I'm entering the train, and I will find the toilet and go straight to the toilet. Alright. <laughs> there it is. Crime number two. I'm going to teach you how to get on train for free. And then he goes to the toilet, he stays there for hours. So not only is he taking up something, he's doing something illegal, but possibly one of the people who wanted to take a juice couldn't now because of him. And I think that's the worst crime right now, okay? If anybody needs to, you know, drop the kids off at work, you got to do that. And if Phidias is preventing you from <clears throat> taking a trip down to Brown Town, <laughs> then he's the worst guy. Here is the bathroom. I would just lock myself the whole time in the bathroom. So I came to my destination now. I think he is waiting for me outside. And I was right. He was just waiting to catch me. So the only thing I could do is to pretend that I'm sick. No, no, don't do it. I'm sick. That's not the only thing you could do. And you might be sick, but not physically. You know, bro, I don't know how many, like I've watched three videos and I'm done, personally. I don't know how you can sustain an audience and especially because Phidias is so intent on trying to push positive content, doing things that make other people's day worse, harder, and stuff is counterintuitive. Because <clears throat> I can see what he's trying to do here. And I'll explain more at the end. But he's clearly got a YouTube strategy he's trying to implement because of the people he's seen. And this is not working at all. It is just not. These dudes have to constantly chase him around countries and like make sure that he's adhering to their law that is taking time away when they could be doing other things this guy is a menace when i sat down he released me and immediately i started running but he called the police and they are searching it's like the movie Catch Me If You Can if you hated the protagonist and you just hoped that the movie would end. And so, uh, you know what? Maybe he's been watching Steven Spielberg because he also spends a lot of time in the airport. He has two videos with the same thumbnail that says, I lived in an airport for seven days and I lived in an airport for 10 days. It's like he watched the terminal and he's like, I can do that shit. It's easy for me now. Right. Luckily, the train has arrived before the police could find me. Again, we're going to do the same method. There it is. There it is. He gets released by the cops, then runs to another train to do the exact same shit. Some people would call that idiocracy. Other people would call that persistence. Phidias, one of the most persistent people of all time. In the challenge, we need to follow all the instructions my teacher gave us. <laughs> Who the fuck is your teacher? And why did he pop up seven minutes into this? 
Who is this guy? Why is he rubbing his hands like Birdman and shit? Like he's gonna do some evil stuff. What the fuck is that? Who's your team? What? Is this Harvard? Is this what Harvard? Okay. All right. I'm just gonna not say. I don't know. I don't know his life. I don't know why he needs a teacher who's. I don't know which teacher uh, approves of this. We arrived in the Okayama station. Hopefully, the ticket guy is not waiting outside. So, we did it. We are at Okayama station. But all of a sudden, a stranger saw me struggling and accepted to take me in his car to Kyoto. So, he's just relying on the kindness of strangers. And, you know, for what it's worth, you're looking at Japan and the people there seem to be almost like unnaturally kind in the way that they're operating. And I don't know, maybe I just am too much of a cynic and I don't trust enough people because of where I came from. But man, that is crazy. If I saw some dude with blue hair at 4 a.m. with a camera, just, I'm tired, I'm hungry. I don't think I'd let him in my car. <laughs> Are you safe? Yeah. Everything is good. Yeah, I slept like on the road. So if she's sleeping on the road, then she's not safe. Whether she says she is or not, no not something that you should be doing again. And, you know, not even for girls, for guys, for anyone who's young, for old people, for people. There is no need for this content. We don't have to put ourselves through hell and back to entertain people. That cannot be the only way to get people to watch your channel on YouTube. That's ridiculous, bro. I'm next to the road. So no everything is good. Okay. So now while I'm waiting the bus, I will try to get some free breakfast. Oh, uh, there we, this is rule break number three. He goes to a hotel. He just looks at a door number, repeats it to the lady and she trusts him so much that she just gives him a card and then he has free breakfast. The hotel. I went up to the rooms to check the number so I could use it as a passcode for the breakfast. Room 505. Thank you. And it worked. I just have access to a five-star Japanese buffet. Oh my God. All right. <clears throat> like, uh, again, uh, by the end of the video, there's two points I want to bring up. One is why he succeeded on Eric's channel and is failing on his. And two, the, Ryan, the Brian Trahan method that he's doing the opposite way. But yeah, he eats a five-star breakfast. He gets on a train or, uh, sorry, a long haul bus. And the other dude, one of the four dudes makes it, but he gets kicked off. So everyone in, who's doing this challenge is annoying people in one way or another. He sneaked in the bus and the bus driver noticed him. No, 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 I'll pay. No. I'll give you no, cash. No, no, no. The bus is full, the night cave is not going to make it in this bus. How do you like, you know, have, a, I don't know. These people like gotta have families. How do you show your, you know, friends and stuff, your content. Hey guys, I'm, I'm doing illegal shit. You want to see? No. No, we all have jobs and families. It's kind of, your life is really, really sad, bro. I don't want to watch that. I feel very sad for you as a human being. All right, guys, I'm just going to go back to Phidias. He's my best friend. Again, one of the reasons I say your life is sad. That's an alien, not a man. So get a better life, bro. Whoever that guy is, get a better life. Bro, I started to run, and I'm the only one, and I'm leaving. He almost gets run over by a car because he's doing like, I don't know. <laughs> he's spinning around in Tokyo City or something. I, just, I don't even know what he's doing at this point. <laughs> so the last person to come here will get eliminated. Uh, anyway, this was a whole challenge for $10,000 because he's doing the Mr. Beast like, I went to Tokyo and ruined everyone's lives. First person to ruin the most lives wins the most money. He's doing that sort of thing. And at the end, they whoever reaches the landmark first wins. But it turns out that's not even true. When something is failing, you need to pivot. So I cannot stay more time in that gas station. Thank you. Right, sorry, I almost forgot. He's pivoting which is his favorite word to do. And he basically is trying to get to the final point of his destination, but he can't get there alone. So he has to squash into a car with kids. Thank you. I got picked up by this beautiful... <laughs> Stop it. Get some help. No, don't call the kids beautiful. You called one sexier early. Stop hitting on kids, bro. This, you could catch a case in a whole different way. Like, your content sucks objectively speaking, but like you're going to, you're going into the realm of illegal. That's the whole different problem you don't want. They don't like the flash in their eyes. Then don't put the flash in their eyes. They're kids. 
Also, uh, I'm blurring out the kids' faces because I don't think that there is any way in humanity that I can justify putting some random kids on camera on a public site like YouTube to millions of people and think that that is okay in some degree. I just don't think that's good. I was stuck in the gas station, but when I changed my behavior and I pivot to do a different thing, it worked. So this is pivoting, okay? It's pivoting. I thought he said P word the whole time. I didn't know what he meant. I said P, P word, power, P word, persistence. It's just each time he like picks a different P word. And then he like, you, <laughs> P word, pussy. I'm doing that now. I'm here, I touched it. Yes, 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 I won. <laughs> mm. hmm. It's sad, it's very sad. He's a very sad man. There is no winners and losers, and there is a lot of money so we can spend here, all four of us in Japan to celebrate the most luxurious. So at the end, he touches the thing first. He wins his own challenge, and he says that, no, we're just, there's no actual winner or loser of this challenge. Uh, we're all gonna spend it together, and then just basically goes on a holiday and shows you pictures of the holiday that they've been having, which pretty much ruins the whole immersion of the fact that the challenge had stakes and someone got to win the stakes. Can you imagine if Mr. Beast did that and at the end someone won 500k and he was like, there's no real winners or losers. So we're gonna split the money between 500,000 people and each person gets a dollar. It's good work, guys. The most luxurious way possible. For the quote, the most valuable reward isn't what you receive, but rather the personal growth you achieve through the journey. He ends with a quote that he read probably from the back of a Chick-fil-A paper. That video, I believe, uh, I'm not a YouTube rep, but I did look on the community guidelines and it does say if it's illegal and you film it, you might get a strike. Uh, I'm not saying he should, uh, but YouTube probably should check on this content because this is a bit crazy. Um, yeah, like I said, this is, I just wanted to look at those videos. I wanted to talk about why he succeeded on Eric's channel. Eric, this dude is um, actually able to tell a story. He's not going left and right and he understands the pacing and how to go from point A to point to B. That's how his channel grew. What he didn't have was some dude who was crazy, like Johnny Knoxville who needed Steve-O. And this was the Steve-O for all intents and purposes. He would just do the crazy things. He wouldn't have to think of the story, how it got from point A to point B, edit everything, write a script. He wasn't that guy. And so both of them succeeded by letting Phidias flourish, doing his crazy stuff, and Eric putting him in the position to do it. Both of them benefited. When they're both apart, Eric doesn't have that person, and Phidias does not have that, that actual consistency in the scripts to get from point A to point B. So both of them are falling in that regard. And as for the Ryan Trahan comparison, I think everybody's seen that Penny series where he turns uh, a scent into something bigger. And it's a, a video that is predicated on the idea that strangers are nice people and can help you and they're doing something good to help you get to a finish line. The series also was to raise money for people who didn't have food and Ryan Trahan raised over a million dollars, which was a beyond amazing thing to do. This dude is showing you how to be legal in countries. And I don't know if it's necessarily helping his young audience. Whereas maybe you watch Ryan Trahan video and you get inspired to also help other people. This guy's like, I'm going to show you how to do it for free. And then winks at you. and. In his mind, he's just finding a niche of his own. And to his credit, he can talk to anyone and do the most stupid things and feel no shame. That's a superpower in itself. It's just used very wrongly when the person behind it has very ill intent. And it might not be malicious, but it is stupid. And sometimes, just sometimes, it's just as bad. Now, I looked at his channel and the most recent video is again, for some reason has a picture of a kid and it says, 13 year old kid bulls his own log cabin. So I don't know the direction Phidias is going in. I don't know why he has a picture of a dude who's 13 years old building a log, but I don't wanna know. 
So I'm gonna leave that to its devices and hopefully Phidias understands that maybe he should actually take a step back, consider what his content wants to say, and then come back a more reformed man. Cause <clears throat> I'm gonna give you the quote of the day, Phidias. This is at the end of my video. Wise man once said to me, stop calling 13 year olds sexy. That's ridiculous. All right. Thank you. Take care of yourselves. Watch something that's good. Support your favorite YouTubers. Bye.